Tonight, Wisconsin's governor urging peace as the nation awaits a verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial. Jurors deliberated for eight and a half hours today, and they're deciding whether Rittenhouse was the instigator or a concerned citizen who came under attack while trying to protect property. Twelve jurors are going to make that call. Seven women, five men, only one of them a person of color. The defense in this case is blaming protesters for what happened. The rioters. The demonstrators who turned into rioters, those are the individuals who bring us forth. The only person who shot and killed anyone was the defendant. Yes, there was property damage. No one's here to defend that. Now, Rittenhouse faces five felony charges from first degree intentional homicide to reckless endangerment. He faces life in prison if he's convicted. The jurors are going to continue to deliberate tomorrow morning. And in the meantime, the governor of Wisconsin has 500 National Guard troops on standby. Shots for cash here at home. Another school district voting to provide incentives for its employees. But there's a requirement. Edgewood ISD offering extra cash to those who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The school board passing that one time stipend tonight. The amount of money given out based on how long the employee or substitute has worked for the district. The payments will be given out in December. For example, five years and under will get $50. 16 to 20 years in the district, $200. 40 years or more between $450 and $500. Other measures passed tonight were extending emergency paid sick leave benefits through June of 2022 and renovations at several schools, including John F. Kennedy High School. All right, we're going to get another health care facility. It's going to be in Bernie. The Baptist Health System is going to bring a hospital there because so many people are moving there. If you've been there, you know there's a lot of growth. Baptist says that the new facility could offer emergency care, but it would mostly stick to less severe injuries and limited hospital stays. Anybody who needs to stay longer would go to other hospitals like those in San Antonio. Outpatient services, medical imaging, I'm certainly going to um, work with our affiliated physician network to bring physicians to the community as well. So here's something else. Brady Phillips says that it's going to offer an opportunity for physicians who live in Bernie to work in their own community. Also, more patients are going to be able to stay near their home while utilizing the new health care treatment options. And that place is set to open late 2023 or early 2024. But that's not all. That's not the only new hospital that's coming to our area. Methodist Healthcare in the process of building a new hospital in West Bear County. Just last month, crews broke ground near Loop 1604 and Highway 151. The facility is set to have 54 acute care beds in a medical office building, and that should be done in two years. Ah, it's finally here. The annual HEB Christmas tree is in downtown. It arrived just before nine this morning. Now crews are working to get the 50 foot tree decorated. 50 feet tall. Big. Yeah, whoa, Tannenbaum. <laughs> in just 10 days, the official lighting ceremony will take place in Travis Park. Jocelyn Rodriguez says this time of year is always spent with family enjoying the holiday decorations. We always go to Travis Park for the tree and we're excited about the new ice ring and we're excited for all our families to come and skate with us. That skating rink in Travis Park set to open on Friday. The Christmas tree lighting ceremony takes place the day after Thanksgiving, just before 630. All right. Well, you know, people who are waiting for that ice skating rink are really going to have to pay attention to what Sarah Spivey is going to be saying because we're going to be riding a weather roller coaster. We absolutely are. And I love, love that uh, Sky 12 video there of downtown San Antonio. Looks amazing uh, with the Christmas tree on the what show. Yeah. Tell us that. Hilton, I think yes. that's the Hilton that Palacio the, del Rio right by La Villita. That there. is yeah. that is it. Exactly right. So yeah, it's, it's starting to look a little bit more like the holidays out there with the lights getting set up, but it will feel a little bit more like late fall. Uh, this time, 24 hours from now, we're going to get a cold front moving through uh, the hill country right about this time tomorrow and then through San Antonio around midnight. And that's going to make it feel like fall at least for about 48 hours or so. So let's go ahead and talk about how uh, we fared today. It was a warm one, 10 degrees above the average of 71. We were at 81 for the afternoon high today. And this morning was very warm, 64 degrees this morning compared to the average 
range 50. We had fog this morning and guess what? We're going to have fog tomorrow morning. Humidity has been on the rise even just within the last couple of hours. Dew points from the Gulf of Mexico have been rising. 62 degrees is the dew point. That's in our muggy range and temperatures can only cool down to the dew point. So guess what? Our morning low is going to be. 62 tomorrow morning as well. And you can see here on the future cast visibility that there is going to be a uh, fog tomorrow morning, especially along and west of I 35. Not necessarily out to Del Rio where it's a little bit uh, drier, but in Kerrville, Hondo, Uvalde, we're going to see visibility reduced to less than a mile in many places around the Alamo City and especially in the valleys up in the hill country where uh, visibility could be less than uh, a mile in Bandera and and in Tarpley as well. But then by about the mid morning hours, so 10 o'clock, we are going to see that improve. And a lot like today, we'll be looking at total sunshine as soon as lunch. And with total sunshine, we're going to be warm. We'll be near 82 tomorrow for the high temperature, 84 for the high in Del Rio, 83 in Eagle Pass, 86 in Laredo, 82 in New Braunfels, and 80 in Kerrville, near 80 in Fredericksburg as well. You can spot where our next cold front is even without the temperatures on the map. You see the snow across the northern Rockies. That's behind that front right now. Uh, and notice that it's not really producing a lot of precipitation. It's a fairly dry system. Uh, dew points are going to be a lot drier. It's going to feel like chapstick weather outside. You're going to need the chapstick and temperatures are going to take a tumble. It's in the 40s right now behind that front in Colorado, and that front is going to set us into the 40s by Friday morning. Let me take you through the future cast here. Notice that when that front moves through at midnight, this is midnight tomorrow into early Thursday. Not a lot of rain with this front, only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. So we're not going to have any good healthy rain from this system, unfortunately. But behind that, we are going to see winds gusting up to about 40 miles per hour in places. So Thursday is going to be very windy. Any kind of light patio furniture, outdoor Christmas decorations, you're really going to want to make sure that those are uh, tied down firmly or brought inside because by Thursday in the mid morning hours, those gusts from 40 miles per hour, uh, you're going to really feel that out there and it's going to drop temperatures quite a bit. Tomorrow's high is 82. Thursday's high only 63 Friday 65 more mild over the weekend before a weak cold front moves through to start the work week. So for your Wednesday waking up with patchy fog tomorrow sun is going to rise at seven clearing skies and 76 at noon sunny and warm. It will be breezy south winds 10 to 20 gusting up to 30 and then right around 10 close to midnight. We could have a shower as that front moves through, but the real difference that you'll notice are the windy conditions, the cooler weather. It's going to be sweater weather for at least 48 hours, especially by Friday morning when we dip down into the low to mid 40s and then a mild weekend to enjoy some time outdoors. Stephanie and Steve. I awesome. love that sweater weather for at least 48 hours. Yeah, at least. <laughs> then at after least. that, you know, back to short sleep. Yeah. You can only take it in short bursts. Exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. And our friend Greg Simmons joins us now. I don't want you to break everyone's heart. The Spurs are in L.A. Yes. Could it be? The it be? news is good early. Okay. All right. They didn't okay. do so well against the Lakers in L.A. without LeBron. Can they do better against the Clippers without Kawhi Leonard? Tell me if you've heard that story before. Also, we come back. Canyon headed to state in the volleyball tournament. Coming up. DeJounte Murray coming off a triple-double on Sunday night in the Staples Center against the Lakers, hoping that production can continue tonight against kawhi -less Clippers. First shot of the game for the Spurs. Derek White knocks down the step-back three to get the Spurs off on the right foot. DeJounte Murray on the baseline nails his jumper to give the Spurs a two-point edge. Then Murray pokes the ball away from Paul George. Doug McDermott picks it up, gets it back to Murray for the easy bucket. Final seconds of the first quarter, Lonnie Walker with the steal. He's going the other way, and look at him go behind the back to get to the rim before the buzzer. Great play, but the Spurs would be down five after one. Let's see how they stand now. And it's a little bit worse. Now in the second, they're down 46-34.
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. As the Dallas Cowboys look to start another win streak when they face the Chiefs in Kansas City this Sunday afternoon, the Cowboys celebrate their best all-around game of the season in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. In fact, the Cowboys special teams has now blocked a punt in three of their last four games, including this one by Torrance Armstrong, resulting in the Cowboys touchdown when it's recovered in the end zone by Nashawn Wright, the same Cowboy who accidentally touched a block punt against the Broncos past the line of scrimmage and went to back to Denver by a rule after the Broncos recovered for nation to recover it i mean you can't make this up <laughs> you know just the next week he he has a chance at redemption i guess you could call it even though last week i don't consider it an error um but for him to find the ball again just you know shows he's got a little nose for the football there you go. All the hard work, all the unprecedented success. It all comes down to one game this Saturday when the undefeated and 15th ranked UTSA Runners host the University of Alabama at Birmingham with a Conference USA West Division title on the line for UTSA. If the 10 0 Roadrunners win, they will take the Conference USA West Division title for the first time in school history and will host the Conference USA Championship in the Alamo Dome. Should UAB win, then they will have the inside track on the title, but still must win out against UTEP the following week. That's because UTSA is 6 0 in conference play. UAB is 5-1. and one. Since UAB has returned to playing football in 2017, the Roadrunners have never beaten the Blazers. We know we're playing the champs. Uh, they've won three years in a row. We know how much this game really means to our program. I, don't, I, I can't recall the last time a UTSA team beat UAB, let alone play them for a championship like this. Um, we know they're a really good team. They're really physical up front. Their linebackers fly around. Their safeties can cover, and they tackle well. Um, we know they're a really good team. They're probably the most physical defense we've played all year, and uh, we think it's a great challenge for our offense to go match it. It means a lot knowing we haven't beat them and knowing that they're the defending conference champs, so it gives us another chip on our shoulder to go out and win. The main thing is just playing poise and noise. That's what we're taught. Um, trusting the triangle and um, do, just doing our job, doing our 111th on the field. Um, take care of your job to the best of your ability with, full, with, with perfect effort, and that's, that's all they can ask of us, and that's what we're going to do. All right, the Roadrunners have now moved up to 22 in the college football playoff rankings. Kick off in the Alamo Dome on Saturday, set for 2.30. The Brandeis Broncos are now the only area team headed to the state high school volleyball tournament. Next. Saturday afternoon, Canyon Volleyball swept Dripping Springs in the regional final and punched their tickets to the UIL State Tournament for the first time since 2015. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley caught up with the Cougarettes this morning as they prepare for a road trip to Garland. So determined after losing to them twice this year in our fall line tournament and the second round of district it was it was almost like revenge for us and like we knew what we wanted and that morning we all woke up like we're doing this we're winning this game it was it was just so much fun saturday's class 5a regional final victory over dripping springs was the latest landmark for a canyon volleyball program that is preparing to make its 12th all-time appearance at state it is so exciting like you wake up every morning you're just like, I'm excited to get up at 7 a.m. I'm excited to come here every morning. Like, it means a lot, especially with this group of girls I've been playing with, some of them since second grade. It means so much, especially for Coach Sanders as well. It's a really, like, positive vibe right now. We are we are so excited. We've never been to state, so this is a kind of a new experience for us. And um, I think we're all just really pumped and excited to see, uh, try new things. There is still volleyball left to be played, and this year's squad would love nothing more than to bring home the program's first state title since 1983. We definitely want to feel the excitement um, here and there, but at the same time, we have to come into practice ready to go and get the job done. The first step on that journey is Friday's Class 5A state semifinal against Grapevine at the Curtis Colwell Center in Garland. We've done this together. It's not been one person. It's been the team, the coaches, the managers, fans, parents. Everyone has played a crucial role, and so um, I couldn't be more grateful for each of them. For KSAT 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Seeley. All right, thanks a lot, Andrew. We visited with Brandeis today at 5, so good luck to both teams this coming weekend. Yeah, and Spurs playing as we speak. Yes, they are. Yeah, Hopefully as, they're getting a little narrow on the scoreboard. As Sarah Spivey said, she's, we're all as Spurs fans are getting ready to be hurt again. <laughs> we'll be right back after Thanks, that. Sarah. All right, check out this holiday display in Suffolk, Virginia. Keith Mitchell worked Woo! for weeks to turn his yard into a winter wonderland. He says it was all created for his six-year-old granddaughter. Aww. She asked for 100 lights. Instead, he gave her 1.5 million lights. Wow, that's a good grandpa right there. That is. That's mm. going above and beyond. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yep.
very, very beautiful indeed. And we're going to feel a lot more like fall in the next 48 hours. We're going to get a cold front moving through tomorrow night. But until then, it's going to be another warm day for us. We'll be dropping down into the 50s to start Thursday. It'll be windy and then only in the 60s for the next couple of days after that. So right. feeling more like fall. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That's it for the night beat GMSA at 430. Have a great night. Go Spurs, go! <laughs> <laughs>